if you're grading for TV, you, you grade on a TV set. And if you're grading for cinema, you grade on a cinema screen because the, the look is different. The look of light bouncing off a screen is different from a, the look of something backlit that's illuminated. It really is Nucoda, Baselight and Da Vinci are the three most commonly used systems. Generally, you walk into a room and there's either a grade one monitor, if you're grading for television, or there's a Christie or Barco projector on the screen. And these are all very carefully calibrated. They're usually calibrated every week or even every day so that they show exactly the right colour tone and colour balance and dynamic range uh, that's representative of what you're working on. And then you go through, usually from episode one or the first scene of the film, all the way through to the end. And first pass, the colorist is usually trying to balance things. And then you're talking to them about, you, want it, you may want it much more contrasty, or you want to desaturate some colors, or push some colors, or put some, uh, you can vignette, you can shape, you can do a lot. And it depends on how much time you've got, really. If you're grading for TV, you, you grade on a TV set. And if you're grading for cinema, you grade on a cinema screen, because the, the look is different. The look of light bouncing off a screen is different from a, the look of something backlit that's illuminated. And so you really need to grade for the environment that the picture is primarily going to be seen in. And you also have to keep one and half an eye on also the fact that the general public won't have a grade one monitor in a dark room. They'll be watching it in a bright sitting room. And so even on Wolf Hall, we had uh, a standard LCD set that you could get from Tesco's in the room. When we review, we turn lights on in the room. So it looked like a living room lit up and we'd look both on the grade one and on the cheap telly. It's a bit like sound recordists will use really expensive monitors speakers, but they'll also use little cheap speakers, like transistor radio speakers, on the mixing desk because they need to hear how the mix is going to sound on the radio as well as on someone's stereo. And it does need to work for both. So we had, because we were really pushing the edge of how dark you could go in Wolf Hall, we needed to make sure that it would still hold up on a standard television. I did start in editing. I did. I think that's the interesting thing. Editing is you can make beautiful shots. You know, you can do lots of beautiful shots. And each shot might not be very good, but when they go together, they you get three or four shots that aren't particularly strong, and they there's some magic to them. That's you know, it can be real poetry, visual poetry. You know, and I think you know, working with um, it's quite interesting when you do things, and you know whether whether I do them or the director tells me to do them. Like this editor Pietro Scalia, who's you know we with Ridley for years, what he finds and what he digs up, okay, you know, and you know it's a beautiful shot, but where he chooses to cut into it, it might be just as the camera's running out, it's, oh, I know, I know. and you know where, and also just some of the junk ideas that he makes into beautiful sequences, and that's not uh, that's not that's not written in scripts, that's not Shakespeare, that's not that's just that's just just raw filmmaking. So I think the editing is where things come to life. I remember, the, you know, taking a few shots and actually cutting for the first time when this shot joins that shot. Oh my God, it actually works. And actually, you know, rather than just like, can cut, you clap, cut, you know, suddenly it's drama. It's really happening. And that guy's talking to her and she's looking at him and the car's driving up. And that actually might sound incredibly sort of obvious, but the wonderment of that was, I remember that quite clearly. So editing, yeah, I wish, you know, it could be more involved in editing, but it's not my job. Um, you might get asked in uh, to look at something or, you know, or come and see the cut or what do you think about this? Or, and you might actually say, you know what, you should look at the B-roll of that because I think it's better and because you remember it. And they would have marked the A-roll and they'd, then they'd be cutting with the A-roll of some wide shot. But why they've disregarded the other shots because something weird happened in the middle of it. But they're only using the end of the, the wide shot. So the end was good on the other one. So you actually have to say, you know, have you looked at that again? Now, they, that should be logged. But sometimes you can remember better because you saw it and you went through it all. And you say, oh, and, and that might be helpful. But really, you know, my input in the editing is minimal. Uh, nothing at all, really. And as I said, I, I love being in the, in the cutting room. It's so much nicer. You, know, you can 
not 50,000 people and you can choose that, we can choose this. Well, let's go and have a coffee. You know, I mean, I don't get to have coffee. I get, well, someone might bring me something, but um, you get yelled at all the time. So you're having to think and you know, the decisions are, for better or worse, have to be fast. And um, So the editing, you have that choice. And that was one of the reasons I got away from the editing room because there were too many choices. Thank <laughs> you.